All right then, my friends. So I think we're at the point now where we know enough about routes, views, and components that we can start to introduce a database and some real data instead of just using a hard-coded array in the routes file. So then to do this, the first thing we need to do is understand how Laravel works with a database through something called migrations. So migrations are a bit like a set of instructions or a blueprint that describe how to structure a database table for any given resource. For example, the data resource we want to work with is Ninja data. So we'd create a migration file to describe how to structure a Ninja table in terms of what columns it should have and what types of data should be in those columns. And then we could run that migration file, which in turn generates the table for us according to the schema that we define in it. Now, when we create a new Laravel app, the starter project already comes with some default migration files for different tables, and it automatically runs those migrations to create the tables. So if you head to the database folder over here, you're gonna see a migrations folder inside that, and that is where all current and future migration files are gonna live. If you click on the top one to open it, you're gonna see what a migration file looks like. Might seem complex, but it's really not. So this one, is for the users table and a couple of other tables too. And for each of those tables, we're defining a schema where we specify the table name and any columns the table should have, including the type of data each column should have too. For example, in the users table, we declare all these columns and the types of data for them. A name column, which is a string, an email column, which is also a string, and it must be unique, etc. And notice all of these table schemas are inside a function called up. So when we run a migration file to create all these tables with these columns, this up function is the thing that actually runs to create all those tables. Now we can also roll back a migration, which then runs another function defined down here called down. And inside this function, you can see we actually drop all those tables, meaning we delete them all, the opposite of what the up function does. So we create migration files to define a table schema for a data resource. We can run the migration, which runs the up function to create the table. And we can also roll back migrations, which runs the down function to drop or delete the tables. There is a little bit more to it than that, but I want to keep this quite simple to begin with. So then, as a bit of a practice, why don't we try creating a new migration file to define a to-do table, and then we can run the migration to create that table. Now, we're not going to be ultimately working with to-do data. This is only to show you how we can make these migrations and then run them. Later on, we'll be making a migration file for the Ninja table, which we will be working with. For now, we're just kind of playing around with this a little bit. So then we could manually create the migration file ourselves using all the correct naming conventions, but I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, we can use a tool called Artisan to automate the task for us. Now, Artisan is a command line tool baked into Laravel, which we can use to run tasks like to generate files, run migrations, to optimize the application, etc. And as you delve more into Laravel, you'll find yourself using it quite a lot. If you wanna see all the artisan commands available, you can just open up a terminal and type PHP artisan and press enter. And then you should see a list of all the different commands that we can use. So if you scroll through this, you're gonna see a hell of a lot of different things we can do with it. Now, the command that we wanna use is the make command to make a migration file. So if you scroll to where it says make, you should see all the different things that we can make with it. And we're looking for the command to make a new migration. And we can make that by saying make, then a colon, then migration. All right, so let's try this out. I'm gonna type PHP artisan, then make, then a colon, then migration, and then a space. So then we also give this migration a name, which is gonna be create underscore to do's underscore table and this is a naming convention we usually follow in laravel for migrations all right awesome so now we can open up this new migration file and have a little look inside and straight away you can see we've got the up method 
and that is to create the table according to the schema. And we've also got the down method to drop the to-dos table as well. Also within the table schema, you can see that we already have two table columns defined, one for the ID and one for timestamps. So the ID function makes an ID column for us, which is automatically assigned an incrementing value when new records are created in the table, and it acts as the primary key column for the table. And the timestamps function creates two daytime columns, which automatically update as well, called created at and updated at. So these are two special functions that we can use within a schema to generate those columns. And when we make a new migration file like this, they come along for the ride. The other columns we need to add manually. To do that, we can come to the next line down and use the dollar sign table value and then use the function to define the type of data that this new column should be. For example, I could use the string function and inside this function as an argument, I would pass the column name, which is going to be in our case title. So now we're defining this other column called title, which should contain string values. Now I could make another column by coming to the next line and again using dollar sign table. And then this time we're going to use the Boolean method and we'll call this column is underscore complete. All right, so I think that's enough for now. So let's save the file and try running the migration to create this table. Before we do that though, I would recommend you install a package for VS Code called SQLite Viewer. And that package allows us to view SQLite database tables directly in VS Code. Without that or a similar package, you probably won't be able to. So install that first of all, and then come back to the database folder and look for the file called database.sqlite. If you click on that, then hopefully you're going to see a bunch of tables already created as a part of the starter project using those pre-made migration files we talked about. If you click on one of those tables, like migrations, for example, you're going to see the table structure and any records inside it. So actually, just as a side note, Laravel also keeps track of all of the migrations that you run. And when you run a migration, it adds that to the database. And it does this so that we can roll back migrations to a previous database state, if you like, using this table, essentially. All right, then. So now let's try running the migration we just created. To do this, we're going to open the terminal and type PHP artisan. And then we use the command migrate. Now, what this does for us is look for any new migration files since the last migration batch was run and it runs those migration files to create the tables. In our case, all the pre-made migrations for things like the user table were all run in a previous batch when we created the Laravel project. So the only new migration left to run is the one we just created for the to-dos table. So that means when we run this command, it's going to run the migration for us and create that table. So once you've done that, open up the database file again, and hopefully you should see the new to do's table. Now you might need to click the refresh button over here in order to see it. But if you click on that table, you should now see all the columns that we added in the to do schema inside the migration file. Also, if you open the migrations table, you're going to see a new record added here for the most recent migration that was run, the one we just did. OK, so I mentioned we can also roll back migrations. And when we do that, it runs the down method inside a migration file to drop the table. To do this, we can open the terminal again and this time type PHP artisan migrate again. Then we add a colon and then we say after this roll back and then we press enter. And when we do this, it should drop that to do's table, which we can see it does over here if we refresh the list. And it should also remove the latest migration from the migrations table as well. Awesome. So now we know a little bit about how migrations work and how we can use them to create tables. So for now, I'm actually going to delete the to do's migration file because we're not going to be working with to do's. And in the next lesson and from the next lesson onwards, we'll be working with a table to store ninja data in instead.